Outer Wilds is a good game. I've played it, I've made mods for it. It's the only game I can think of where you're able to explore a miniature version of a solar system, where planets are mere kilometers apart instead of the hundreds of millions of kilometers they are apart in real life. In this video, I want to try my hand at recreating this mini solar system mechanic in the Godot game engine. I started up a new project in Godot 4, and to start off with, I want to make it so the player character can walk along the surface of a sphere. I'm using a rigid body as the player character, since flying around in space and walking around these mini planets, I want the physics forces to be simulated, and rigid bodies do that. Originally, I was trying to rotate the player using torque. Uh, this, was, this was a bad idea. The first iteration was pretty jank, uh, but now I'm able to walk around normally. It was a bit disorientating, D disorienting? Dis I was getting disoriented walking around on a sphere in complete darkness. Uh, it kind of makes it difficult to know where you're going. So I implemented a skybox, so I had some sort of reference frame. I mean, I, I, I still don't know where I'm going, because uh, there's nothing really on this planet. There's there's trees somewhere. Or where are the trees? Okay, there, there, there's the trees, and the skybox is currently just random noise. I'm trying to make a shader now to put stars in the sky. And look look at those stars. That's, <laughs> that's really good stars. Looking good. Progress on the star front is going very well, I'd say. I was, I was really struggling with this. There's circles, and my idea was that every circle here that I placed in the sky, I'd kind of shrink it and offset it and color it so that each one can be a star. Just ignore the red splotches. I don't know what I was even thinking with that. I'm having doubts, but you know, there's circles, at least. At this point, I'm still sliding around a bit, but it's kind of working. You can see the stars moving as the planet moves. I'm kind of going along with it, and character was still very, very wobbly at this point. The fun part about about looking back at all this progress I made is knowing that I had to redo all the physics later and none of this was good or was used in the end. I put a sun in the sky now because the walking physics was good enough probably and was slowly killing me. Most of this project was me getting something to a point where I deemed it good enough and then giving up and moving on to the next thing. Here's me flying in space. I can jump my way up into orbit, but I always orient so my feet face the ground. I gave the sun gravity, again, to get away from the player physics. So there is a really simple equation to get the orbital velocity for a planet to move in a circle around a body, so I implemented that. So for some reason now, uh, my, my player players isn't experiencing gravity, and that's because uh, when I enable gravity, on the player character, they suddenly start moving at one tenth the speed of light, and then uh, then Godot crashes. So that's something that's happening. Another issue I was having, it's a long list of issues that I've been having, is that when I pause the game, and then unpause the game, I fly off into space, so it looks like the player character is still accumulating forces while paused, even though they're not moving. I've made it so that there is now a volume around each planet, and when the player flies into that volume, they start getting gravitationally attracted by the other planet. I also added in some jetpack type controls, so holding shift makes me go up, and holding control makes me go down. With that, I'm able now to add you know, some moons, some more planets. For my own sanity, and you know, somewhat of a nice feature, is I have added a map mode view from above the solar system, so I can press tab to toggle between this and my first person player camera. Uh, I recently read uh, Death's End, it was a good, good sci-fi book, a nice good, good book. It had some ring world type megastructure type things in it, so I wanted to do a thing like that. I also thought it would be an interesting way to sort of stress test my gravity controls because this would be a completely different shape where instead of feeling gravity it would be the centripetal or is it centrifugal force that's uh, pushing you up against the walls. So you might be noticing that I am falling through the floor of the ring world. This is because I forgot a common physics engine limitation, which is that you cannot have concave shapes. Is it concave shape? What's, what's the one where it's got like indents in it? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta Google this. I should have I looked this up before I started recording. Yeah, yeah, concave. Yeah, yeah as I was saying, common physics engine limitation is that you cannot 
have concave shapes as physics colliders on rigid bodies. I don't know why this is the case. Apparently it adds a lot of computational complexity to the physics calculations, so it's generally just not supported. Uh, this is an issue I've seen before while modding Outer Wilds, where in that game, the planets of course often have caves and stuff on them. They are concave shapes. So in that game, only specific physics calculations are simulated on the planets, and it's all done manually through code that the devs wrote themselves. It doesn't use the engine's physics for that. So as I foreshadowed earlier, I went through and rewrote all the physics code. So the planets are all static bodies now, which in Godot normally do not move and are not affected by physics. Instead, I run physics calculations each frame on all of them to determine their linear and angular velocities based on the rotational period that I give them. Planets tend to rotate, so the angular velocity for that is just constant, and the velocity changes depending on the gravitational forces that they're subjected to. The planets are only affected gravitationally by a single body at most, which is whatever they happen to be orbiting. So for a planet, they are only affected by the sun's gravity, and for a moon, they are affected by, I lied to you, the moons experience gravity from the planet, but also the gravity of whatever the planet is experiencing. So a planet feels the sun's gravity, moon of the planet feels gravity from the planet and the sun, and then if the moon had a moon, you know, it would feel the moon, planet, and the sun. Cool. Godot has a feature on static bodies which was so incredibly useful. You can set constant angular velocity and constant linear velocity. I'm not sure what those names are meant to mean, but basically what these do is they don't move the body, but they affect any rigid body colliding with the static body as if they were moving with that velocity. So I just set this value to my calculated values for linear and angular velocity, and now the player just moves properly with the planets. Incredibly useful. I'm so glad I actually read the docs. Wow, that was, that was good. Another thing I want to do is that if you're in deep space floating around, you can hold R to rotate yourself around the axis that you're looking at. I also added in some general mouse controls at this point to look up and down and left and right. Uh, you might recall from earlier that I was just rotating the player to look left and right with torque and I was actually using the Q and E keys to do that, so not really good controls. Also, when you're floating in space, you want to rotate to face the direction that the mouse is sort of pointing at, right? So if you look down towards the ground on a planet, that doesn't rotate you, you just look down. But in space, when you look down, it rotates your entire body so that you're now facing that downwards direction. I had no idea how to do atmospheres. <laughs> So I found this shader by Xylan, which looks really cool. One of the problems I had with it was that when you go inside of it, it stops working. I guess it's mostly just for you know distant things. I made a few tweaks to the shader code to have it work when you are inside it. I also had to update it from Godot 3 to Godot 4. They had renamed a bunch of uh, shader constants uh, between these two versions. Now, maybe, maybe it did work when you went inside it in Godot 3, and that was just part of the conversion process. I don't know. Uh, I'm also making a cloud shader, which is just some random noise on a sphere where random noise past a certain point gets kind of truncated and we just get transparent sky and above a certain threshold it appears as a cloud. I think I think I made the clouds too too big. Oh no, that's that's a lot of clouds. Another little tweak I made to the atmosphere shader is to have it go completely black on the night side. Before it was like on the day side it was one color, on the night side it was another color. So I altered it a bit so that on the day side it's a color, on sort of the boundary between the day and the night sides it's a different color so you get some, sort of your sunset. And then on the, the night side it's just transparent, it's just black. Now I need a ship. This involved a lot of refactoring so that the player gravity controls could be generally applied to other objects. Uh, the ship is a rigid body, but you can go inside it. It is concave. I couldn't use the same static body trick that I used on the planets because while it is concave, I really need these physics forces to affect it so it can sort of, you know, crash and bounce around on planets and get hit by things and all that. Uh, to fix it this time, I had to separate the concave mesh 
into multiple convex pieces in Blender and create a collision mesh out of each individual part. So the shape overall is concave, but if I just take the floor, that's convex. If I just take a wall, that's convex. You know, you get the idea. I wrote a script in Godot that would then take the individual objects in from the exported Blender mesh and make a collision shape out of each one and attach those to the rigid body as its children. I also started working on implementing a max speed for the player. To do this, I needed to calculate what part of the player's velocity is due to the orbit of the planet that it's on, and then also the rotation of the planet. So you know, if you're standing still on the surface of the Earth, you are moving relative to the Sun at the same speed that the Earth is. Plus, you're standing on the surface of a spinning Earth, so you have some additional velocity from that angular velocity. So in this clip, it's not fully working because that rotational part wasn't being calculated properly yet. I finally figured out the rotational velocity part. The issue was it was doing that calculation in global space and not local space. And I, I have finally, I have finally won. At this point, I can explore the solar system, but there's not really much to see. The planets are all very barren. So I wanted to make at least one planet a bit more detailed. So here I'm checking out Godot 4's new volumetric fog node, and I'm also working on a water shader. I put grass on this planet using a plugin by Icterus Games called Simple Grass Textured. You can get it in the Godot asset store. Is it a store? I, I, th I think they're all free, so it's not really a store. There's a thing, you can browse assets. I, I forget what it's called. I figured, especially for this sort of mock-up, that I shouldn't try to reinvent the wheel too much and use existing plugins where possible. Now I got some better looking trees. All of the free assets that I've used, I will cite in the description where I got them from. I also modified the Snappy plugin by some guy, Jay Jillick. Jay Jillick. Thank you, Jay Jillick, for making this. Unfortunately, it didn't work for me. So I modified it to make it easier to snap the trees to the surface of the planet uh, because to rotate them by hand would be insane. Next up, I modeled a planet in Blender with some mountains, a lake, and a river. And now here it is. Uh, to not be too derivative of Outer Wilds, I wanted to make the planet all snowy. So I'm trying to do a particle system effect this point you can see when I pause they start jittering weirdly that this is Godot's fault that's not my fault there is a, an option on the particle system for interpolation this is because the particles run at a fixed frame rate of 30 FPS this value can be adjusted but my system is running at a different frame rate so it does some interpolation between frames to make sure it still looks decent. Now, when the game is paused, this interpolation keeps running. Uh, to get around this, I have the game, you know, send out a, a signal when it gets paused, an event that tells the particle effect, hey, just turn off interpolation when we're paused and turn it back on when we unpause and then it's fine. Anyway, now I'm at a point where I'm a bit happier with it. There's at least one detailed planet and it's kind of neat to fly around. So I figured I'd stop here, but not before finding a few sound effects on freesound.org. Now we have this sort of wind sound that happens when you're flying too quickly within an atmosphere and the player's jetpack has some sounds, the ship has some thrust sounds, and there's these sort of janky footstep sounds when you're walking around on the surface. The first public video on my channel is me making an attempt at creating a miniature solar system and failing miserably. So this was a really satisfying project to actually finish. I'll probably continue working on this project in the future, adding more to each planet and implementing some sort of objective to achieve in the solar system. If you want to support me in making videos, games, and mods, there's a link to my Patreon in the video description. As thanks, I'll be putting the prototype shown in this video up for patrons to download and play with. 
Thanks for watching. Okay, bye.